Hello, this is Colin, and that's Lomu, well, Lomu's backside. She's um, come to participate once again. And today is another day in our David's Tea Challenge, possibly the most difficult and challenging challenge of the David's Tea Challenge. Challenge! Um, because today I'm sampling something called Coffee Peru. I have no idea if that's how it's pronounced. Pua, pua, pua. Coffee pua. Now, I mentioned pua uh, earlier, and it's a uh, uh, not obscure, but it's it's not a it's an unusual um, kind of tea. It's considered like the most challenging of teas, I guess you could say. And if you are a real tea lover, you you love Peru. Because, uh, I, I mean, I've tried it before, and I don't know, perhaps it was just the blend that I had tried, but it tasted like the sweepings off the jungle floor of some um, swamp somewhere in Southeast Asia. And I didn't care for it. It was just too much for me. But um, it's possible that they've toned it down. You know, David's being David's. They don't want anything too terribly strong. But the, the real part is coffee beans. Yes, they put coffee beans in a tea. That's just crazy. I mean, that... Uh, would, would you, I don't know, put battery oil, ba battery fluid into, like, champagne? I, I don't understand this. I mean, I don't drink coffee. I can't really judge coffee. I, I don't know if a good coffee from a bad coffee. It all just tastes like liquid mud heated up to me so here i am with per uh, tea which uh, is challenging and coffee which i despise and an inability to actually judge coffee because i i don't drink it so yeah this is going to be fun uh well david's being david's they are trying to make the taste a little more attractive by adding was it Roasted coffee beans, natural coffee, as opposed to artificial coffee, <clears throat> almond and vanilla flavoring. So, presumably, the almond and vanilla flavoring will give it the you know attractive amount of sweet that seems to be required. So, here goes in the spirit of exploration and adventure, just like you know finding the Northeast Passage or the uh, the source of the Nile. Mm. Mm. I don't absolutely hate it. I mean, there's very often you'll see a tea that has like a, a name on it, um, like licorice tea, which I actually quite like, even though I don't like licorice. Um, but the taste of the tea is actually not bad. It's it's quite attractive and mild. Uh, I suppose you could say this is a mild paru. I mean, I don't really taste the paru very much. Um, the, the coffee, yes. Particularly the vanilla. The vanilla flavoring seems to come across quite strongly in the aftertaste. So, I mean, it's not repulsive. I can still drink it, but at the same time, um, you know, I'm, it does remind me a bit, like I say, I don't drink coffee. I don't know what good coffee tastes like, but uh, I guess the closest I can come is well, I used to eat coffee crisp as a child, even though coffee crisp didn't really taste like coffee. At least that's the impression I had. So, yeah, it's, it's got, um, it's not overpowering. It's got a sort of mild coffee taste. Perhaps if I steeped it longer, I was a bit of a loss to what temperature to, um, to prepare it at. But the David's Tea website said near boiling, so I put it on oolong setting. And, uh, yeah, so, well, for those of you like coffee you might enjoy this if um 
like I say, I don't really detect much in the way, in the taste of the, the tea itself, but uh, coffee, a bit of vanilla, and um, I suppose there's some almond somewhere. Lomo, what do you think? Lomo, what do you think? Once again, she doesn't care. Anywho, that's, uh, that's enough for today, I think. Bye-bye.